is for the people, not the person. We need closure. We need, people need to have that time to have that closure, to have that time to show some respect, to have that time to come together and celebrate a life. So, so as silly as that is, is, is it sounds, what I'm saying is, is this is, is, is for you. It's for each and every one of you. It's, it's for your closure. Because the fact is, when, when that last breath comes, <laughs> to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. If you've been born again, you know who Jesus is. you got that personal relationship. Praise God, there ain't nobody here anymore. It's just a shell. This body dies. Everybody does. The Word says uh, uh, it's appointed to man to die but once and, 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 then, the, and then judgment. But, uh, but glory be to God. Guys, I'll tell you what. If you've been born again, if you know the Lord, ha, ha, there's going to come a day you'll never have to worry about another funeral home. You'll never have to worry about another graveyard. You'll never have to look at, at somebody in the box that you love and say goodbye anymore. You'll never have to go through the time of that grief of that process of separation. But glory be to God. I'll tell you what. I know that day's going to come. That we're all going to have to stand before the Lord. We're all going to have to give a cat will cry. I'm going to get my cheek in it. Where do I feel? Oh, we go, brother. <laughs> oh, but glory be to God. I'll tell you what it says in Ecclesiastes that it passes the time to rejoice. And when we pass, it's time to rejoice. Praise God. We ought to be shouting. I know we cry. I know we grieve because physically we're separated. But if you've been born again, right. if you know the Lord, right. ha, praise God, that day's going to come when there's going to be a reunion. I mean a reunion. And there'll never be any more sickness. There'll never be any more dying. There'll never be any more saying goodbye. There'll never be any more passion. Oh, glory be to God, guys. Right. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> oh, right. hallelujah. go through so much stuff in this life and it's so short. Right. We do so many things and we and, 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 we, and we, we, we wrestle with stuff, we fight with stuff, we do all this stuff to try to impress people or, or this or that when the fact is that each and every one of our lives make an impact. Right. You're impacting the people in one way or another. You're impacting people. So whether you do it in a godly way or a good way, it's going to be over so quick. Right. Make sure you don't waste any of it. Make sure you don't waste any time. Make sure you don't waste any of it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, guys. I was 28 years old when I got saved. And uh, after I got saved, after I had this amazing life change, I thought, what in the world have I been doing wasting my life for? What in the world? I thought I knew what joy was. I thought I knew what peace was. I thought I knew what it was to be happy until I was born again. Until I was born again, until I until I truly had a relationship with the Lord. I had experience when I was 10. It didn't change my life. I believed that Jesus was the Son of God and, and, and all that. But when I was 28, my life changed. It changed me forever. Praise the Lord. And, and today, this morning, when I was at work and I was praying, you know, asking the Lord what to speak about today and then so on and so forth. There's so many people who think that they're okay. There's so many people who are convinced because they had an experience when they were a kid or because they, they show up at church sometimes, they think that they're fine, they think they got it, they got it made, they think, boy, no matter what, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to tell you something, guys. If you do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he says, what must a person do to enter the kingdom of heaven? He says, you must be born again. That's right. You must be born again. I'm going to tell you something, guys. There's so many people, praise God, there's so many people that go through this life that if, that if uh, 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 lied to yourself, have, 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 have been, been believing some kind of falsehood, that, that they're okay, that everything in their life's okay, and they can live any, any way they want to and do anything they want to and so on. But the Bible says that few will enter the kingdom of heaven. That's right, that's right. That's what the word says, few will enter the kingdom of heaven. That hell expands itself daily. So praise God, we come to celebrate this brother's life. Right. And like, he, like this brother was praying in here earlier, and like all of you know, the man loved the Lord, he knew the Lord. Praise God, he's in heaven. What you need to be worried about is you ready to meet the Lord. Are you ready for heaven? Are you ready? Do you know in your heart of hearts that you've been born again? Do you know in your heart of hearts if this was your last day on this earth? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if this was your last day, Praise God, are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you ready? Because you ain't promised tomorrow. Me, me and Mary was laid in bed the other night and, and our son texts us 
me. He said, I, I think Robert just got killed. And I said, what? So Mary right back asked him how he knows. He said, because the coroner just come to hold his wife. Her husband got killed. He's delivering pizzas and she's working at Domino's cooking. Some of his friends work there. Wildest thing in the world to hear that. Don't just kind of shake you up, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. But you ain't promised tomorrow. There is no word, and the, and the word does it say that God is fair, but it does say he's right, just. Right, right. He's a just God, but he never says everything's going to be fair, and it's going to be just like you ain't promised tomorrow, God. You know that if this was your last day, that you'd be ready to meet the Lord Jesus. And you know that you've had a personal experience and a personal relationship, that you've been born again, and that you don't doubt your salvation. Right. You know what I'm saying? I... I when, 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 when I got saved, boy, I mean, just changed me. I got to thinking about it. I remember having doubts when I was younger, and I remember going to church and thinking, well, is this real? Is, is this, you know, is this? And I got to pray one night. I said, Lord, I need to know this is the real deal. I, I, I need to know that somebody can't talk me out of this one day or something not go right, that, that I'm going to be doubting this. I, I need something solid. Right, right. And as silly as that may sound, y'all, Oh, I sat and I prayed and I prayed because I had the faith to know that he would show me something real. I'm going to tell you something. I don't doubt there's a God in heaven. I don't doubt that Jesus didn't die for me. I don't doubt that he didn't draw me and call me until I was born again. I don't doubt that when I leave this world, I'm going to be going home. I don't doubt him. Yeah, yeah. Right in but I had a personal experience. So many people believe that because they go to church or, or just try to live right or but that's enough. That's right. But you must be born again. That's right. Praise the Lord. You must be born again. I was doing a funeral. I was going to tell them earlier. I was, I was doing a funeral. Years ago, I found a bunch of them. I had a bunch of them. But years ago, I was doing this funeral. There's an older gentleman. He's, he's in pretty poor health. And it's the only time I'd ever met the man. But me and him were standing there talking. And he's having a hard time standing. He was, he was really getting older. And, uh, he, he was, they were saying something. I said, I'll just follow your lead. And he misunderstood what I said. He said, boy, don't you ever follow somebody's lead. You better be led by the Spirit. Right. right. He said, now this is what he said. Don't get me wrong. He said, son, I mean, boy, he got all over me. He said, you ever stood over somebody and tried to comfort their family and know they were burning in hell? Have you ever, ever had an experience where you knew in your heart those people didn't make it? He said, brother, I'll tell you what, if you ever do, you'll preach harder. Oh, if you thought you'll linger at that altar call longer, you'll do everything you know to do. If you ever have that experience, I said, no, sir, I ain't never had it. He said, I hope you don't. Well, to this day, I can't say that I have. Glory be to God, I've never had that in my heart when I stood and spoke. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. God expands itself daily the word to And if you ain't been born again, if you right. don't know the Lord. And I've had people tell me, you ain't got no good to say that in the view. Well, that ain't what it's about. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If this is the one chance you get to hear it, I pray you listen good. And I pray it gets down in your spirit. And glory be to God. I pray some folks get changed today. I pray that if, if you know the Lord and walk away, that today is the day that it opens your eyes. Praise God. If you've never been born again, I pray today is the day yeah, yeah. that you come to know it. Because there ain't nothing no better in this life. And glory be to God. I sure don't want to miss the goodness he's got for the one to come.
I don't want no blood on my hands. I sure don't want to stand before the Lord one day. And he said, you know these folks that I told you to tell? You know this situation that went on and I told you and you didn't do it. Now they're burning in hell and it's your fault. Right. Now as long as I told you the truth, wherever you end up after that, that's on you. Because it's a choice you're going to have to make. Boy, that's cold, man. You might not ever heard it at a funeral before, but you ever give me a chance at Walmart, you'll hear it there too. Right, preacher, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord loves you, and he loves you enough to send a couple of nuts, ain't that right, brother? To tell you the truth. And have God ask him to come do it. <laughs> but, but the world thinks it's crazy for somebody to tell them something. Folks, nowadays, they don't get convicted. They get offended. Oh. Well, if you think you're in a truth storm with things, you're hell really going to be upset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Praise God for a brother that's going to be walking the streets of gold. But oh, praise God for a whole lot of folks that Jesus died for, that he's calling to, that he loves. And he made every, everything for them. But all they got to do is say yes. That's right. All they got to do is ask the Lord in their heart. Yeah. And if everybody in here say glory be to God, isn't that wonderful? But boy, if you don't know the Lord, if you walk away from the Lord, I'm going to tell you what, I don't care if we're in the water. Right. Man, he's rejoicing. Amen. He's rejoicing. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent right. for the kingdom of God is at hand. Right, preacher. Yeah. Reckon how much longer you got. That's a cold thing to say. Reckon how much longer you got. Death don't care. If you're 100 or 5, as awful as that is, and people say they don't want to hear that, you're supposed to be confident of us. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So I don't know what tomorrow holds. That's right, preacher. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. These last 20 something years have been wonderful. I wouldn't trade them for nothing, and I sure wouldn't go back to who I used to be. Right. Jesus comes to give us life and get it more abundantly. I'll take it more abundantly. And I'm sure looking forward to, to what comes after this one. But uh, God bless you guys.
a funeral service and when a person is saved, I don't call it a funeral service. I call it a going home service, y'all. Because they've gone somewhere. And and Brother Mitch, I, I say to the family, God bless y'all today and Lord give you peace in your hearts and minds and Mitch, I know you're going to miss your dad, but I know just as sure as I'm standing here, I believe Benny's with the Lord. And uh, Mitch told me many times that his dad, he told him that he was saved, and I believe that. And, you know, uh, I had the opportunity to pray for him in the hospital when he was going out of here. And I believe uh, the subconscious mind can still hear even though he was out, I believe his subconscious could hear me. And I got in his ear, and I said to him, I said, Benny, this is Preacher Ray, and I want you to call on Jesus. And if there's anything in your life that, that ain't like the Lord, I want you to call on him and repent of any sin. And when I said that, his shoulder, his right shoulder jumped. And that was enough for me to know that his mind heard that, Chad, and I believe he saved Mitch. And I, I stand here, I'm not one to preach you into heaven. If you ain't saved, I ain't going to say you are. Right. But I believe this man is. And I believe he's with the Lord right now, boys and girls. I believe your grandpa's home, Jeremy. I believe he's with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're here for today is to, I'm celebrating a home going. I ain't. I ain't here for no no burial or no no. Uh, 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 there'll be a time to weep. I weep at my mom and dad's after it had passed, but I knew they were where they were. My mom knew the Lord, and if you know the Lord, they ain't nothing to worry about. You with Jesus, and that's what our goal is. Whether you Baptist, whether you Pentecostal, or whatever you are, if you got Jesus Christ today. You are with the Lord. And that's this man knew the Lord. And uh, we may have his box here, his casket. But that's just a shell of a man right there. We all go pass away, brother, one day. But what I'm trying to say today is this man knew the Lord. And we, we ought to give shouts for that because he ain't, hey, he ain't suffering no more. He ain't in no pain no more. He's with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and his Lord and Savior. But we're celebrating Benny Weaver. Mitch, your dad, kids, your papa. We're here celebrating his going home. And that's what I call it today, a, a going home service for Benny Weaver. And I just believe that today. And if you eat, Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. And without that blessed hope, we don't have anything. Now, you look at that man that was Baptist for 15 years. I've been Pentecostal for 20. But it ain't about your denomination. It's about your relationship with Jesus Christ and who he is. And if you don't have a relationship with him today, all I can say to you, and Benny would say to you, that you're headed for a red hot hell outside of Jesus Christ. I want to give you a little scripture. And I'm doing this for Benny. I'm doing it for my friend and his family that has helped me over the years. And the boys have worked in my food bank over the years and, and helped me, Brother Charles, to do what we try to do for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something else. If you're born again and you're saved today, you need to be doing more than sitting on a pew somewhere patting it. Amen. God can call us into this and get us saved to be sinners and warm and pews. We ought to be out there telling somebody, Jeremy, about Jesus Christ and about the blood of the Lord and about there is a heaven, but there is But I want to share with you in Romans 10 and 9 says, and I believe this for me, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth 
the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I believe this man called on the Lord mentioned one time in his life. He bowed a knee at one time and confessed his sins to Jesus Christ. Therefore, I believe that he's born again this evening according to the Word. And if it ain't in the Word, I don't want it. Amen. The Word is the living Word inspired of God. It's God breathed. I don't get up and tell you a fairy tale. I get up and tell you what God said. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, the Bible says in John 11 and 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, if we just believe and receive Jesus Christ, he said, if you believeth in me, though you were dead, yet you shall live. Oh, hallelujah. There's no death for the Christian. There's no death for the sinner. I tell you and I today that you spirit on the inside of you is going to live somewhere in eternity, whether it be heaven or whether it be hell. Amen. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you shall live. I believe that, Brother John. The Bible says in John 10 and 9, Jesus speaking, he said, I am the door. By me, if any man or any woman enter in, he or she shall be saved, shall be born of the Spirit, and shall go in and out and find passion. I talked to a little girl the other night, a young lady, 17, 18 year old. I witnessed a lot of people. I tell a lot of people about Jesus. And I say, you need to also if you're saved. And I said, uh, I said, honey, do you know Jesus? And she laughed and smiled. I said, yes, I know Jesus. And then I give her another question, Brother Shaw. I said, but are you born again? She said, what are you talking about? So I had to get my Bible and show her. A lot of people know about Jesus. A lot of them know him, but they're not born again. You can hear about Jesus all you want to. I heard about him all my life, and I was going to bust hell wide open. I was a drunk. I was a jailbird. I was a thief. And I knew Jesus, but I was not born again. You got to be born of your spirit. You got to one day realize that Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. And believe that. And look to him by faith, ask him to forgive you of your sin and save you. And he'll come in you. By the Holy Ghost. But he said, I'm the door. Jesus is the door. Mitchell is for the family, you family people that love him. I love him. Met him one time and talked to him. He was a nice gentleman. He let me store some of my chairs in one of his storage buildings. And I loved him. And I believe Benny's okay. But the Bible says this, Brother Mitch, but as it, it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. If you saved today, you love Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ.
time. I tell people wherever I go that I love Jesus. If you're really born again and saved, you should be a mouthpiece for the Lord today. Not just preachers, but lay folk that are born again need to lift up Jesus. You know this world's going to hell in a basket. Can't, can't people see that we're in the end time? It's obvious if you know anything about the Bible. We're seeing prophecy being fulfilled as I speak. We're closer than you think. And let me tell you something. You go around and tell me you've saved all you want to. Born again all you want to. But if you still ain't living the life, something wrong somewhere. Because when you get born again, the seed of God is in your belly and you cannot make a habitual practice of sin no more. If you cannot come to the altar and get saved, if you still get drunk, if you still run around with the women, if you still take your dope and do what you want to do, I question your salvation. I'm not a judge, but I know enough in the Word that if all Rabbi Shanda, Rabbi Hasaya, that you must be born again. But how good is it going to be for you? Well, this man is, the Bible said, but as it is written, I has not seen this, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for us that love him. Shouldn't we work for somebody like that? I don't believe I can work my way to heaven. I believe it's a finished work. But I believe i got to go on with the Lord. I believe this. If I choose to go back out and be a whoremonger and a drunk and a dopehead and stay out there, I'm going to bust hell wide open. You better fear the Lord and you better fear a place called hell. It's where your dad's at. The Bible says in Revelation, for God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more funerals, no more dying, no more car wrecks, no more murders and people getting shot and killed in this crazy world that we live in. No more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither Shall there be any more pain? For the former things are passed away. Brenda, when we get to heaven, it's going to be the greatest experience we ever could imagine. Is it worth it all? Yes, yeah, worth it all. But hey, don't be a closet Christian. The gays have came out, they're not closet no more. Why should the Christian be closet? Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're born again, if you're washed in the blood, let the world know. Gays are letting us know. Transsexuals are letting us know. Do you love them, brother? Ray? Yeah, I love them, but I hate their sin. God loves them, but he hates their sin. All this stuff that's going on here, you know where we hit it? One world agenda. One world government was forming right in your eyes. The take over America, destructed, one world government. I'm going to close with this. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. And I saw a great white throne. This is where the sinners going to appear. We're going to appear at the great, at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. But the sinners are going to appear here, Brother John. For well, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Your name's either in the book of life or your name is not in the book of life. But I got news for everybody here today. My Bible tells me over in Revelation 3 that you're in my name can be blotted out of the book of life. Yes, Read it for yourself. Yes, I didn't write this Bible. He did. Sure said. Amen. Which are in the book of life shall be judged. Are our names in the book of life, young people? Older people, are your names in the book of life? I hear declare to you today, this preacher, my name is in the book of life. He's got it written down. Charles, Ray, Strickland, I'll live. I'll never die. I'll walk with the Lord like Gideon because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I received him one day. But he said, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, they were made according to their works. And death, hell, were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. It's called the second death, but you'll never die. The spirit man can't die. The flesh man will die. But your spirit and my spirit will live forever. Will it be in heaven or will it be in hell? You're going to live somewhere as this man. And I believe he's with the Lord. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, hell, preacher, it's just a, a figment of your imagination. No, it said over in Luke's Gospel 16 that that was not a parable. Jesus Christ knew the name of the man Lazarus. He knew it. And I'm here to tell you today, without Jesus Christ, oh, hallelujah, and not knowing him, there is a place called hell where you'll burn and burn and burn forever. Without Jesus, there's no hope. That's why he was called the blessed hope. And my and this preacher's job is to love people, but also to tell them that there is a place that you will go to and let me tell you, you're going to be calling for God then. But you know what hell is? It's separation from God. Oh, Rabbi say, you holler out and he ain't going to answer you. It's separation from the almighty living God. It's fire that's going to be licking your spirit, man. You're going to be in torment. You're going to be burning now. You're going to be wanting a drink of water and it ain't going to come. You're going to pray for death. Death to take wings and fly away. You better hear me today. You better hear me. I love you today. And I believe being in Jesus, bitch. But any of you that don't know the Lord, they make an altar up here. I advise you, I beg you, if you don't, do not know Jesus Christ or are not born again, I would come to these altars. I know how to get there. I can tell you how to get there. But all oh, you got to do, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. If you need salvation, if you need me to pray with you, I'm here to help you, not to hurt you. I'm here to tell you Jesus Christ loves you but he'll love you all the way into hell. You choose to go to heaven or hell. People say why does he send people to hell? He don't. You send yourself. He sent his son to pay an awful price for us to receive that. And if we don't receive it, we choose. 
the other room to go to hell. If anybody needs prayer, these altars are open if you need prayer. I thank God for my brother Mitch and his family. I thank God for Benny because I know where he's at. He's with the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray over this congregation in Jesus' name. Anybody here that don't know you, Lord, I ask you by the Holy Ghost to put them under conviction. Now, before they leave, Lord, put them under heavy conviction and draw them to this sweet rose of Sharon, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The altars are open. Father God, we love you today. We praise you. We thank you for Benny's going home service, Lord. I believe he's with you. And I ask you, Lord, to bless the family, give them peace and love in their heart, and Lord, just console them today and bless them this day in Jesus' name. Amen.